We've got some new faces. Why don't we just introduce everybody? Tell me your name again. I'm sorry. I'm Samaria. Hi, it's good to see you. Uh, back there. Justin, 104.5. Hi, Justin. Logan, 104.5. Okay, you guys are out in full force today. <laughs> Tell me your name. Julian. Who are you? We can, we can find you a better intern than that. We can find you we can find you a better internship than that. Where are you from, Julian? From Maryland. Okay, where do you go to school? I graduated from the University of Maryland last Nice. Have you had a chance to talk to our uh, Terps? I've spoken to some of them um, on the staff, but nobody on the team yet. Okay. Well, if you stick around, hopefully you can find uh, Chig or uh, Jalen. Uh, Sam may be out there in training camp. How about you? Okay. Any other? <laughs> Who wants to start? Julian, you got a question? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, just in regards to your, your local players, um, Colton Dowell and, and uh, Jackson, uh, is there any significance of having uh, players on who are from the area on the team? I, I don't think that there is a large significance other than those were two players that, that we got to evaluate during our local pro day. Uh, that were able to come here, work out for us, spend the day. Um, you know, there was a safety, you know, even last year from, from middle, playing for the Philadelphia Eagles, Blankenship, and then had a great workout. And um, the guy that we targeted weren't able to, to get in the, in the post draft. He chose the Eagles, you know. So you, you get to see a lot of these players that some of them get drafted, some of them don't but you get to have an interaction with them. And, and so we use that experience to, to isolate and target those, those few players that you mentioned. I got a flyover for my press conference today. Any thoughts, Mike, been on, on uh, Andre Dillard kind of getting adjusted to your system, your scheme, new team? How is, what's your sort of yeah. early He's come in, he's been here since the start of the program and has worked hard and has continued to to get in shape and to, to, you know, we demand a lot out of that group as far as finishing and, you know, we try to make practice and, you know, the, the most conditioning that, that they can get. And so that in the game, you know, we're able to, to, to finish and push piles and try to finish longer than the guy with the ball. And, you know, ultimately we have to improve, you know, our ability to protect a quarterback and, and, and Andre's part of that. And he has to continue to, to work at those things. We talked yesterday about, you know, being able to go against Arden Key and Arden, you know, these guys are practicing like pros. They're they're working, they're helping each other, and um, I think it was a good start. Did you found them to be a pretty quick study so far? Um, yeah, as far as um, yeah, I mean, I think that there are always going to be some questions. I mean, there's new terminology from team to team, uh, from year to year, but you know, I think he's always asked questions. I've noticed him that if there's something, he goes back and he'll ask Hoss or Sully uh, something. As it pertains to a question or something that came up, how has Nico managed to kind of he does, has done some stuff on his own in previous off season, but gets here seems like he's always in shape and ready to go. How's he done that? Well, that's that? professionals, Jimmy. You know, what I mean, you've been around this game a lot of years, and that's what professionals do. Whether they, you know, are here uh, or they're not, they're they're you're a professional athlete. You're expected to to be in shape. You're expected to be prepared uh, for the season uh, to to perform. And that's what you know, I used those guys as an example yesterday. Like Danico and, and Kevin, you know, they showed up for the for the mandatory mini camp. Obviously, been been working, ready to go, brought energy, um, picked up where they left off, and so that's the expectation um, for for everybody, whether they're here or whether they're not. What about Sierra Tar? He said he wants to take his game to another level this this season. For for you, how can he how can he go about doing that? Um. You know, for Tier, it's always been and will always be, you know, the ability to, to, to stay out there and, and play at the level uh, with, the, with the effort um, that we require. You know, Jeff plays a lot of snaps because Jeff plays them really good, and, but he's also physically conditioned to stay out there. And if Jeff was not running to the football, uh, then we would bring him over on the side, get him some rest, and put him back in the game. And so... And we want Tier to play as many snaps as he possibly can at that level because he can help us. And uh, that, that's our goal. It's a communication that, that him and I have had uh, to where we can try to get to him to, to be able to play 
you know, and help us on third down. And, you know, even when, when Jeff wasn't out there, there were games where he factored and, and he improved his pass rush and his ability to affect the quarterback. So um, he, he knows that he needs to be, um, you know, an interior physical presence, you know, obviously in the middle of the pocket and a run game, and then also, you know, improve his pass rush and, and continue to work on his conditioning so they can play, you know, 65% of the snaps and not, you know, 40 or 45. With Stonehouse, what's the, I guess, the trade-off point in terms of him working to increase his hang time but maybe losing a few of the gross yards that he averaged last year? Uh, our number one goal, obviously, on the punt team is to, to flip the field and limit the return. And um, I, again, I think that there's a balance between that, he's working hard. He's working hard on his, you know, location and hang time. And you know, we all were accustomed to to Brett when he was, you know, the best in the league at, at 45 yards, you know, down the field, two yards from the sideline. Those are easy punts to cover. Um, so Stoney's working hard, and, and I don't know what that balance is, but I know that, you know, he's he's got a big leg and he's and he's willing, and, and we can, you know, continue to improve with our you know plus 50 punting, and, and when we're you know, trying to pin him inside the 10-yard line. Aaron Brewer, Aaron Brewer told me yesterday that he always anticipated that he was going to become a center in the NFL. How early did you guys identify that, and has that made his transition and your entire offensive line's transition easier? He, he's worked at center in the, in the past. I mean, he's had snaps in there. Just we've had, you know, Ben's been here, and it's kind of where we needed him to play. And um, Brew's – made those calls and he jumped in there last year a couple times when we needed them. So, I mean, I think that there we recognize some versatility uh, up front with, with Brew. And so we're excited to see him continue to progress uh, inside. Mike, when you're when you're changing uh, offenses or, co or coordinators on that side, is it, when, you, when you go into this, is there a balance of trying to, to do things different but not get away from some of the core principles that have made you, you successful? Well, I think that that's always something that you, I think every company, every organization, every team, every family would want to try to do is have some core values um, that you believe in. There's a lot of different ways to, to approach you know, a, a football team or a philosophy. There's a lot of different ways that, to, to, for people to, to run a business. And so I think that when you make changes, you, you want to try to have still remain some of those core values, but then push the envelope of, of giving them new things to do and study and learn and, and, and be engaged with and make mistakes. Part of growth is making mistakes. And, um, you know, there's always cool examples for, for me to pull out and say, listen, this was a mistake that happened last week. Um, came back and, and a quarterback or a receiver or somebody – you know, fixed it or corrected it or recognized it, and they got the same situation. You know, we, we think that practice is really important, so we'll try to keep those core values um, that we believe in, that we, we think that wins football games, that we know wins football games, but then also try to continue to add things to it. As Tim said yesterday, he said, uh, kind of stuck up for the offense even, even after last year, said, look, it's not broken. You know, there's still some continuity. Did, it, has there been a, a good bit of continuity from last year to this year, even with a new system, so to speak? Yeah. You know what I mean? I think there's been some carryover with the coaches. You know, we've had some really good additions. You know, excited to see where Tony Dews goes, you know, with this group. Um, really excited to be able to add Justin and, and kind of his vision in the run game. And, and there was some similars. He's been in that system that we've had here, but then he's brought some things in here and some ideas and, you know, we're going to try everything and we're going to see what we feel like gives us the best chance and what the players, you know, respond to. Is Christian Fulton dealing with a soft tissue injury? Get here on time and we'll answer some questions. <laughs> Coach, what uh, position group have you seen in the last two days really take the biggest strides? Um, position group analysis. We're grading them already, huh, Jill? Um, I, I probably, you know what? I will tell you this. I thought that there were some cool pockets yesterday, um, from an offensive line standpoint, um, you know, saw that, you know, quarterbacks able to step up in a pocket and deliver some passes, um, 
Sometimes some some we hit, some we didn't. But you know, I thought from that group, you know, from one day to the next, I thought that there was at least some, you know, good pocket getting everybody on the same level, and not getting you know picked or on different levels. So that was that. Like, what can you tell about Christian Fulton's situation? That Christian is here, uh, is under contract, and I would imagine he'll be ready for training camp. Guys that we haven't seen, like Caleb Farley, Dylan Raiders, how are they coming along? You asked that question for I mean, my goodness. <laughs> buddy, the buddy system. The buddy the buddy system. No, it should have been So you're all about team for your team. I just said, hold on, man, this is this is my time. I asked you, did you want to waste your one question on that? And you said you did, so that's why I went in a different direction yesterday. Christian will be ready to go. Excited to have him. So he's here working, studying. Go ahead, Teron. I'm sorry. As far as uh, Caleb Farley, Dylan Radins, how are they coming along? Good. You know what I mean? They're, they're working hard. Um, Christian, uh, excuse me, Caleb, lifting hard, looks strong, looks healthy. Again, just, you know, had a procedure, had a back procedure, and, and those um, certainly come along at different times. Um, Dylan, you know, I would say is on schedule. You know, I don't, wouldn't anticipate him being able to start the – July 25th or whatever the beginning of training camp is, I wouldn't anticipate him starting then. Obviously not, but um, you know, I think it's a good system. These guys are putting a lot of work in. Uh, they got a plan with Todd and Frank, and and following that. There was a report yeah, yesterday that about, about uh, uh, with the middle linebackers, you can't only see so much physicality. It's tying shorts in the spring. Same thing with offensive linemen and defensive linemen, of course. Are you happy with what you're getting accomplished with them? And everything? It is. You know, I mean, we're asking our defensive linemen to play with their hands and play with pad level, right, when we get into some of those jog-through periods. And I think that's when you recognize that their improvement is that they can play at a less speed than 100%, play with their hands, play with pad level, move their feet, stay off the ground. That's really how I identify practices now is – at this time of year is can you go out there and work and stay off the ground and, and not trip and fall over each other. There was a report yesterday that Michael Brockers came in recently for a visit. Is that accurate? And uh, where does that stand? Uh, we had a group of defensive linemen in a couple weeks ago. So that's where that stands. I'm sorry. I just want to make sure I'm right. On, on Raidens, you said he's, he's making strides, but he may not be ready at the, at the I start. wouldn't anticipate that he would be ready at the start of training camp. Just having been just a little more than six months post-op. I'm not going to guarantee anything, but I would say that um, Harold is, is further along just from a time from his surgery. Coach, I wanted to ask you about the, the Division II and Division Three players who have come out. Um, in your experience, has that talent pool grown to reach some of those smaller schools? Mm, I wouldn't want to say either way. I would, you know, I mean, I think that um, – there's obviously a lot of good players in those those conferences and that level, you know, kids develop, athletes, people develop at different ages. You know, what what they look like at 17 or 18 when they go to college, or you know, slip through to a Division two or Division three school. You know, just looking at my own kids and seeing how people develop between 18 and 22 or 23 years old. Um, so. If they can help us and they, they have a, an opportunity, that we'll, we'll give them that opportunity. Along those lines, what, what, how do you evaluate guys maybe that have been in the USFL or XFL before, as far as thinking of adding you know, somebody who could help you? Yeah, I mean, our personnel department is watching all that tape and you know, we see who kind of stands out and if we you know, feel like they're better than the group that we have or do we want to work them out and see where they're at. Come in, give them a physical, just like the visit we talked about the other day. So, you know, we're we're watching all those players as well. Coach, can you talk about how special this DB group can be once they're fully healthy? Um, not really. You know, what I mean, not now. You know, that that'll they'll determine that. You know, it's not going to be me hoping that they're special. You got to go out there. You got to cover your guy. You got to communicate. You got to be able to run multiple coverages. Um, not be on top in a red zone and let the receiver come back, you know, to the goal line and catch a touchdown. All these things that we talk about. So I don't think anybody right now is focused on anything being special. It's about improvement for us. So before, obviously, I know you guys got a lot of questions. Um, I just kind of wanted to address a couple things. Uh, first and foremost, I kind of want to address the whole OTAs and things like that. 
Um, I had been in communication with the coaching staff uh, really early in this offseason before, obviously, all this, this, this news and all this stuff that came out uh, that, you know, I was going to have my own plan to be able to train on my own. Um, obviously, you know, every player on this team um, is in a different stage of their career. Uh, I am very comfortable, obviously, being with Shane, being with the coach staff right for five years, Shane being our coordinator for the last four, very comfortable within the defense. I had stayed in communication with the coaches this entire offseason about any new stuff that we had, any new nu nu nuances that was coming out within the defense. But uh, I had been enjoying training on my own and uh, felt it was very important. And it really, it really was never any, any doubt. Uh, from the coaches in my end that, you know, I wasn't going to be here for minicamp. I knew I was going to be here uh, and be the same player that I've always been, being the same leader that I always will be. Uh, so I kind of just want to put that out there. I know you guys got some other questions, but I just want to so, put that out there. So you're saying that before all the stuff with the contract came up, you you'd already decided that you wanted to train on your own as opposed to being here every day? Yeah, I just wanted to kind of be able to obviously be in tune with what was going on as far as in the meetings, but as far as the strength and conditioning part of it, I had already gotten to the really good groove on my own. Uh, I had started working out probably two weeks after the Super Bowl on my own, and I kind of just wanted to keep that routine, keep that training going. And I felt really good out here today, these past couple of days with my condition and everything. So uh, I'll continue to do that obviously through the summer and uh, get ready to have a really good year. How did you, how did you, how did you feel when they came to you to ask about pay reduction? I mean, I don't really want to get into my feelings or anything about that and any emotions about, you know, I I guarantee you I would not be the last player and I haven't been the first player to come to about a pay cut. You know, I let my agent and, and the organization uh, or obviously ran the GM handle those things. I felt it was very important for myself, though, and for me to come here and uh, be a leader and be the person I've always been uh, making plays, communicating and things like that. So. Uh, and that's, that's all who I'm always going to be. And uh, I just felt that was very important for me. Kevin, was there any conversation about you being moved or you talking to them about moving you or anything like that? Like I said, I really, you know, really didn't get into all that. Really don't want to get into all that uh, because, like I said, man, at the end of the day, I came here for minicamp and I came here to make sure I was going to focus on football. And that's all I'm focused on right now. Uh, like I said, I, you know, I hire people to, to handle business like that. Playing war just for doing what you did this early this offseason as far as preparing. I feel like it's been really great. I feel good. I feel great. I feel fast. Um, and like I said, and still being able to be in tune with everything that was going on with the coaching and uh, and all that stuff. I feel really good. I feel really good about you know being in meetings the past couple of days and being around Coach Harris. I mean his energy is very very contagious. I really love the way he's coaching. Just energy just on the sideline. Uh, and obviously bringing in some of the guys like Sean. Uh, I actually hung out with him before, you know, mini camps and stuff. So I've been able to be around the guys. Uh, so it, it's been pretty good. The relationship with Rand Carthon, like he's known as a people guy. Yeah. How has that been for you developing that relationship with him? Yeah, I've had conversations with him before. I actually, so um, this was in February. I actually, so when I, I told you, I started working out uh, probably two weeks after the Super Bowl. I was coming here working out with Frank, and uh, obviously when Rand got the job, I, you know, he came in the weight room. We kind of chopped it up a little bit. We had some conversations and things like that. Uh, obviously, I was congratulating him and things like that. And obviously, being away from the building and doing different things in the community, I was out in L.A., then NFL broadcast boot camp, and some guys that knew him, just everybody spoke highly of the guy, spoke about how he's a people's person, how, you know, obviously he came from the football background, undrafted free agent, and kind of worked his way up. Uh, can't do nothing but salute a guy like that and just congratulate him. You talked about having individual conversations with you and Derek and Ryan. Obviously, I assume you don't want to get into it, but just how did that assuage you? Did it make you feel better at all? I mean, no. So, like I said, I mean, like I said, obviously, I'm not gonna get in Derek's business or Tannehill's business. Uh, but the conversation I just had with him was just on a personal level. It had nothing to do with that. Uh, so, like I said, the conversations I had with him, they was really good. And um, like I said, I think Rand's a really good guy. I think he was a really good addition to this organization um, just by who he is. And, you know, Ray, as we always talk about bringing in people with high character, and I think he's a high character person based off the conversations and the time I just spent around him. Kevin, yeah, do you think being here this week marks some kind of finality um, with them considering doing anything with your contract? Like, is this a, a mark of you, you being here and being ready for the year, or do you think it's still an ongoing process? Man, I just control the things that I can control. Because uh, like I said, there was no doubt me coming here. So I didn't want to, like, this is not a whole thing with me coming here with just like, oh, I'm here. Like, you know, it wasn't nothing like that. This was always the plan. Uh, and I'm going to continue to work my plan throughout this offseason. Uh, so, yeah, it really had nothing to do with nothing. Like that. next week? I'm going to get into all that right now, PK. I would say a lot of, of players in your position, being a vet, doing everything right, being a consistent player, it would be hard for people to, to come to them and say, hey, can you take a pay cut? Like, what's... 
what's happened in, in your past that built you to be the man you are to, to kind of push that off and say, I'm just going to be here for my team. I'm going to continue to be KD. Yeah, because that, I mean, that's, that's just who I am. You know, everything that I've over my entire life, over my entire career, I just try to be consistent uh, on the field and off the field. Um, don't get too high, don't get too low. I actually, you know, have a meeting with the group earlier this morning and we kind of had a word of the day or whatever. And I just, you know, gratitude is always a word that I try to wake up with every single day. Um, blessed to be in this building, blessed to be around this team, blessed to be around this organization. I had a conversation with you guys on, on clean out day saying that, you know, how much I love this organization. This is my legacy and me being here. So uh, no matter what happens, man, I'm just grateful for every opportunity that I get. Are you still as happy here uh, doing what you're doing with the Titans as you have been the last seven years? A hundred percent. So like I said, man, every single, I just take every day for what it is and uh, not try to think too far in the future or think about the past, man. I just try to focus on what's in front of me. And what's been in front of me this week, obviously, with minicamp and everything, it's been really great. It's been really good to be around the guys just flying around making plays. Hey, so, when you know, Jeff's contract got done, Ram said what this symbolizes is that we're going to draft our guys, we're going to develop them, and if they do the right things, we're going to reward them. You're basically the poster child for that. Is there a little different message when they come to you and ask you to take a pay cut? Uh, I don't know about a different message. Obviously, Jeff, you know, he's earned his contract. I mean, his contract extension. Uh, I was very happy for him. I obviously texted him immediately, gave him congratulations. And, and that's just what it was about, man. Like I said, I don't think that, you know, the, the pay cuts and stuff like that has anything to do with, you know, who we're going to pay, who we're not going to pay. Um, so, like I said, I mean, at the end of the day, I just try to focus on what I, can, what I can do. I don't try to do anything else and try to focus on the what ifs and things like that. I just take for whatever's in front of me and just try to take it. Take it in stride. You, Kevin, you had, you had kind of done everything the, the team had asked for, whether it was on the field, whether it was off the field, or whatever. I guess that's, so my question is, I mean, was, was there any kind of a feeling from you that maybe you were being taken for granted a, a little bit when they asked you to take a, a pay cut when, when you have done so much, you know, pretty much everything they'd asked? I mean, like I said, I'm just going to keep I'm just gonna keep being who I am. Uh, and, you know, whatever happens, whatever happens. But I'm just going to keep being the person that I've always been, being the same leader, being the same player, because that's, that's what is at, at the bottom line. Uh, I'm here to be the best safe that I could possibly be for this organization, and I'm going to continue to do that. You talk about different ways you can improve, what you can do better. When you look back at last year, how do you think you played and what's maybe next? What do you need to do better? Well, I just think for myself personally, uh, there was a lot of things I can improve. Um, I think just for, from every single level, I could have made a lot more plays. I mean, I feel like, you know, I made plays last year, but I can always make more. Obviously, especially looking at our, you know, secondary play and the numbers and things like that. Those things have to improve. Um, but I, like I said, I think with the addition of Coach Harris, some different things we're doing on the back end, uh, I think we have the ability to be elite this year. Uh, and I fully 100% believe that with the guys that we have and just the conversations we're having on the back end, doing some different things, uh, I'm very confident in that. And Kevin, you spoke of Coach Harris's energy and the things that he brings. How does that help you, a veteran uh, on this team? Has that changed anything in how you approach the game? Or has it, have, you, have you picked up anything from him? Uh, it doesn't change anything for me. Uh, I always try to bring energy every single day, uh, try to motivate the guys, uh, try to inspire them by not only just my vocal leadership, but my actions as well. Uh, but it's always great to have your coach out there flying around, having fun. If a guy makes a play, he's running down 30 yards down the field, excited. And he's, he, he's played the game. He played the game for eight years. Uh, so I think, you know, same thing I talk about, very, was very easy to buy into the things he's saying because he's done it before. He's done it at a high level. So uh, it's been excited to work with him. But as you've decided, to, to do your own thing at, at OTAs? Do you think there's any level of psychological thought about what they asked you to do, or was there any advice from your agent or anything like that? No, it wasn't because, like I said, uh, obviously I didn't communicate with my agent that early, but I had already talked to the coaches that I was going to train on my own and do my own thing. So, no, it was no psychological thing. Uh, I've seen Vrabel multiple times this offseason, you know, on the golf course, and we just chopped it up, having fun with each other. Uh, so nothing psychologically changes for me because at the end of the day, uh, my job is always to be the best safety I can possibly be uh, for this organization. So it doesn't change anything. I just continue to train as hard as I can and try to be the best player I can be. So you made this decision as far back as February, March? Earlier than that. What was the thing about training by yourself that was like, that you thought would be beneficial? Like I said, man, I just, I'm just I, like I said. Every player, they're in a different stage, you know, of their careers. Uh, we've had guys on this team that, you know, reported from minicamp or whatever it may be. Um, I just felt that that was going to be my decision this year, very early uh, in the off season, and I feel like it's, it's turned out great for me as far as where I am with my body and my training and how good I feel. 
Because at the end of the day, I wasn't missing anything as far as in the meetings and things like that. I just wanted to be able to, you know, I got my trainer out here as far as uh, that I work out with. Uh, so on the strip conditioning part, I wasn't missing anything at all. And uh, obviously in the meetings, I wasn't missing anything. So. Change anything in terms of how you train, being off on your own, as far as your physique or conditioning, diet, anything like that. Well, so being working out so early in the off season, which was obviously middle of February, I had already was ramping all the way up. And usually, when you coming into April, they kind of, you know, kind of take things back a little bit because guys are just reporting. But I'm already full speed going, and I didn't want to change that. I wanted to be able to keep going and keep pushing myself. Uh, I wouldn't say just to a different level, but I want to keep going with my plan. And uh, like I said, the coaches were receptive of it. And uh, I feel like it's shown over the past couple of days that I'm still in shape and uh, not missing a beat at all. You're a great communicator and you give us clarity on, on a lot of things. You, you had to know how it was going to look or how it was going to be perceived based on the pay cut request and then you not <coughs> yeah. being here. Were you tempted at all to, to clarify that or what was it like to know that the the rumblings were you were somehow upset with the franchise, therefore you weren't here. No, nah, I, did, I didn't feel the need to, to clarify anything. Um, you know, that's one of the reasons why, you know, I really wasn't just like active on trying to jump on the next podcast and, you know, and stuff like that or getting on social media, deleting, like all that is nonsense. Well, at least for me personally, I know players have different ways of how they handle things. I didn't see a need to do any of that. Uh, Cause I didn't want to make it a story, make it a thing, because it's really not a thing in my mind. Like I said, every single day uh, I wake up in the morning with gratitude, and I just want to be the best player and the best person I could possibly be, uh, cause that's the only thing I could focus on. Control what you can control, uh, cause that's 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 been my mentality, that's been my character my entire life. To control what you can control, you can't control if Kentucky takes your scholarship. You got to go to, you know what I'm saying? Like you can't control those things. You just got to work on yourself and try to be a better player and a better person. That's it. Were you doing with Logan Ryan? Uh, yeah, what, I was. What were, what were you guys doing in terms of, is he back here too and you're working with him? No, nah, so Logan uh, was in town doing some media stuff. Okay. Um, he he was on Good Morning Football and he was telling me how good it went. So uh, he got some people helping him out doing some media stuff. So he came here in Nashville and did some media shows and things like that. He hit me up, he said, let's work out together. So like I said, I already been training on my own. So he came in, got some work in with me. Uh, we kind of hung out a little bit. And that's when, uh, Obviously, him and Sean played together, and as we kind of made that connection, we hung out a little bit. So, now it was good to see him, man. Me and Logan, we talk a lot. We talk all the time. Uh, we actually was in Hawaii for the NFL PA, uh, our annual meetings, and we hung out there. So, good friend of mine's and a longtime friend of mine. Did Sean kind of remind you of him in any way in terms of just the way he kind of presents himself and the leadership aspect, too? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I, want, I want to compare both of them because they're both a little different. Uh, obviously, Logan was a really good leader. Uh, he done a lot of things for us being really versatile. They're definitely both versatile in that way. Uh, I think Sean, he's a really good leader for our cornerback room. But at the same time, he listens. He wants to learn. Uh, he wants to be coached. And that's the type of players that we want to bring into the organization. So I think he's been a good fit for us. How different does this offense look to you? How different does it look? Um, well, as far as the scheme and everything, it's definitely a little different. Um, but. I would say that some guys that you know impressed me. I know the running back spirits. He's been really good. Uh, Traylon looks like a different he looks like a different beast this year for sure. Uh, I think he's just playing with a lot of confidence. I really like that from him uh, taking that next step because we're going to need him to take that next step this year to be that guy. Um, but at the end of the day, no matter what, I mean, I think just with the quarterbacks and everybody, I think everybody's just firing. But you know, we all know OTAs, man. It's about learning. Everybody's out here learning, try to you know. Whether they're getting a new offense together, as far as the defense, we're trying to pick up things. So it's always a little bit back and forth between the offense and the defense. But I really like the way they're looking right now. Uh, and like I said, I think they'll do nothing but keep getting better, keep going this way. Yeah, no problem. What's going on? How you guys doing? Good. Good. How much does it help having you know Kevin uh, here this week? Uh, even, you know, and he made clear that he had communicated early that he wouldn't be here during the voluntary portion. Yeah, no, I mean, he's a great addition that we needed this week, um, you know, to bring everything together. I mean, like you said, he wasn't here, but we've been working. I know that he's been working, so when he was able to come in, it was just easy transition right back to where we left off and even better. I know you worked some with Elijah back there, too. What, what, how do you think he's kind of handled that, you know, increased responsibility, just kind of getting comfortable back there? He's handled it good. I mean, he's a smart kid. He's always been smart. Um, he's always been a guy that we can rely on, so... Um, to make that transition for him, he's doing a good job. I know he, you know, obviously he has his ups and downs here and there, but it's nothing major. I mean, he's a guy that, that fixes his corrections the next day. Amani, I've noticed that you've taken more of a leadership role on this team, um, coaching up certain, you know, guys, different guys. Mm -hmm. um, was Kevin's absence 
help did that help you transition into that, or was that always there for you? Um, I think I think both. I mean, whether Kevin's here or not, I'm a, I'm gonna be the leader um, to my young guys and to the guys in the room, or just on the team. Period. Um, you know, I, my fifth year here, um, I know fifth year with Rabel as well, so I know what Rabel likes and wants out of out of the defense and especially out of our uh, DB group. Has uh, Coach Harris helped you along in anything? Has has he rubbed off in any way on you? Um, was there, is there anything new that he's brought to you um, personally? Um, yeah, I mean, he, he, I, I love Coach Harris. I mean, he's came in, he's had energy, um, positive guy. You know, guys are having confidence when they go out there. Um, even if we make a mistake, like, we have guys on the team that are willing to learn and correct those mistakes. Um, and he's done a great job of teaching me things that I haven't, I haven't learned yet or haven't heard yet. So, I mean, I'm ready, I'm ready for, excited for the season. And what different your off, with the early part of your off season as far as where you trained, what you focused on, what, and maybe what are some things you worked on to get better? Um, for me, it's just making sure, you know, I keep my, get my body back right from the season, get my body back healthy as, as early as I can so then I can get back into, you know, workouts and training. And, um, you know, I, for me, personally, I start off with building up muscle, building up my strength and my tendons and, you know, the knees and the ankles. Um, and then I get to my position work and then I get to, you know, actually doing football drill stuff before we get to, you know, OTA time. Not a whole lot of, of experience behind you and, and Kevin at, at safety, you know, do you become a little bit more of a kind of a coach yourself, you know, with, with some of these guys who have less experience trying to bring yeah, them up? Yeah, definitely, because, I mean, who knows? You're one sh shoelace away from breaking from, from being out the game, and then the next guy's up. And, you know, the next guy's up doesn't – we have no fall off, so we expect the same thing, whoever's in there. So, I mean, if, if you're in there, you, you're going to know what to do. Seen maybe from some of the guys that, that we don't necessarily know a whole lot about. Yeah, um, Ty. Ty's been doing a great job. I mean, Ty's the guy that been communicating with me early, right when I came into the. Um, when I, I wasn't here OTAs right away, but my first day he came up and talked to me, introduced me, um, was already asking me questions before we even had our first meeting, and he's been doing a great job. So you guys, what will you do? I guess when next week ends and you got the break until training camp. And what do you hope other guys will do to, to kind of be ready to hit the ground running? Just make sure that, you know, they're conditioned. We don't want guys to be, you know, take, now's not the time to take a break and relax. Um, that was before OTAs. Now it's time to get ready for training camp, um, get your body right, because it's going to be a long season, and it is a long season. You got, I guess, DeAndre Hopkins is coming in for a visit. What do you remember about going against him? And, what do you think he could add to this team? I mean, just elite, elite wide receiver that can catch all passes. I mean, I've seen him. We did. I think we had a joint practice last year with them, and he's catching the ball one hand like it's like he has two hands on one arm. So um, I mean, he's a great receiver. Uh, whatever we do, if we get him or not, I mean, we're just I'm focused on the defense and making sure our team is better. Armani, have you noticed any changes? I know we talked about you know DeAndre Hopkins, but have you noticed any changes in training uh, that you know maybe he's taking that next step to be a, a number one? Yeah, you just see him get more confident in himself. You can see that, you know, he's not questioning his, he knows Rob's doing a good job of just coaching him and he get to his spot, the ball's coming, he's catching it. I mean, he's the guy that, you know, we have confidence in that he's going to make a big place for us.